Some come quite a few. Most of them are in Florida. Yeah, yeah most of them. Yeah. Yeah. And most of them in Southwest Florida. Yeah. So that was our, our slide from the Naples Fed Trust that happened last Sunday. Yeah. But, um, Did you have one uh, yes, yeah. yeah, so you, you know people in Raleigh? That's where my 40 year old brother lives. Okay, well, well I wish I knew. Because we just did that in, uh, what was it, late October, it was a Halloween day, actually, the 31st of October. We were in, you know, Raleigh, downtown Moore Square, right in the center of downtown. We rented the whole park, and we had all kinds of people going by. We, we, uh, we had the video wall out there. We had actually Dr. Bernard from PCRM doing a virtual presentation there. And it was, it, was, it was better than we thought it was going to be. It was, it yeah, was a beautiful area, too. Yeah, yeah, so. A lot of support for this kind of stuff around here. Yes, and our, I say our biggest area, is, as, as I mentioned, Southwest Florida is our biggest area by far, all right? Uh, but Raleigh is a close second in that area. We have two events every year over there. And then the D.C. area, we're also there as well. And there's, we've got a lot of different connections through, through the people that we know in these areas that benefit all of the events, really. Yeah, that's why Raleigh Vets Fest 3, the food trucks ran out of food. <laughs> so, you know, it was a good event. <laughs> yeah. So, restaurant events, we have some upcoming. Um, some of the ones I mentioned here are not in this area, but quite a few of them are. Like La Mirage, there's an event this Saturday. This weekend, so Friday and Saturday. Yeah, yeah and at the Spice Club. Spice Club, Club on Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so I have another slide for that. So we also have a, a YouTube channel. There are some people here that already follow applyingbasedhack.org in our videos, but you'll see us um, like just visiting different vegan restaurants and, and reviewing their food. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of content is on our YouTube channel? You know, we we are traveling all the time, as you may imagine, doing all these events. So wherever we go and get food, we get plant-based food. And so we we have a video. We make a video of every restaurant we go to. We show you what we get. So if you want to, you know, search up a restaurant, we've been to most of the restaurants around here and we're getting food, uh, it's on our YouTube channel. You can see what to order and what to do. And then, of course, interviews, right? Like Dr. Borja, who's our lifestyle medicine director. I got lots of interviews with him talking about different health subjects. Dr. Bernard, I'm gonna do that video with him this weekend. There's all kinds of uh, informational stuff there that, that, that might benefit you. Here is our local vegan group, veganswfl.org. If you haven't joined already, we encourage you to join, and you can post in this group. <laughs> yeah, and remember back in the beginning here, what tonight I mentioned that I started out the nonprofit because I didn't know anybody, and I also started in social media groups. This was one of the first ones I started with two people, and I don't know if you can see how many people are in there now. It's like 5,300, I think, something like that. So, yeah, so this group basically is a vegan group, all right? And it talks about anything, literally anything, that doesn't involve animal products, okay? It's not necessarily focused on any of the three aspects, but all of them, people, animals, and our planet. So it's a very broad group, but it's all local stuff, okay? So if you wanna find out about anything that doesn't involve animal products locally, get on here. You gotta be on Facebook, because that's where it is. But whenever you type that URL in, veganswfl.org, it'll take you straight to this group and you can join. So just know that, and then there's another group, you want to go to the next slide? Yeah. Okay, this is the one that we have this local that's focused specifically on human health. Like if all you're concerned about is human health, you want to make sure to join this group too, or just join this one only. Because it's swflifestyle.org. So if you type in swflifestyle.org on your browser, it'll take you straight to this group. There's about a thousand people in this one. This is all local, okay? And then why do we call it SWFL Lifestyle? It's because of lifestyle medicine. Like everything we're talking about, eating plant-based, is based in the concepts of lifestyle medicine. Are you guys familiar with what lifestyle medicine is? Raise your hand just so I can see. Okay, so it basically is talking about how the lifestyle you choose, the habits you have, and specifically and most importantly, the food that you put in your mouth has the absolute greatest in positive impact potentially on your health. And that's really what we're talking about in this group, local things that, that deal with that. So if you're interested in that, please join the group. Seven oh, seven, okay. <laughs> okay, this is a new thing that's on the website. We're gonna run through this quickly. Intentional communities. Are you guys familiar with an intentional community? I mean, you're aware of a community here, but an intentional community, you guys ever heard of this? Okay, they're private communities 
It's kind of like a co-op form of real estate where you actually have to apply to be able to buy, all right? And it's legal. Uh, and because what they want to do is have people of like mind join a community. These communities here, this is one called Terra Frutis, it's in Ecuador. We're involved with them now because we're seeing that just as if I started this nonprofit back in 2014, I wanted to find like-minded people. There are now like-minded people that are living together in community, very specific like-minded. Like these folks are all plant-based. They're mostly raw eaters. If you guys know what raw is, eating raw, you're, you're eating food that's not cooked, right? And plants, specifically they're eating plants that are not cooked, but that's not a requirement. It, I'm just telling you that they're mostly raw, but they're almost all fully organic. Like you mentioned earlier, they don't want to be eating chemicals, they don't want to put chemicals in their plants, and they're living in a permaculture community. Are you guys familiar with what permaculture is? I have a cousin who teaches. Teaches permaculture? Okay, it's, it's kind of the polar opposite of agriculture, right? Because agriculture, you plow a field, and you knock all the trees down, and then you plant and replant every year. You turn the soil over. You're constantly causing destruction on some level. Permaculture is you design your food forest, okay, because this is designed to feed people, and you plant all your different variety of foods and plants that you're gonna eat, and then you just plant it once, and then you just maintain it. And it becomes the most ec you know, ecologically friendly way to, to garden and to, to grow your own food. So these guys are all growing their own food, too. That's so what I wanna point out. This is a whole lifestyle. They have said, this is our lifestyle, and this is what we're doing. And their goal is to be self-sufficient. They're not quite there yet, but we are in this, so we wanna show the next slide. So you know, we're building a tiny house in that community, Terra Breeze. This is what it looks like right now. Actually, I have some more pictures that are updated. And if you want to see them, go to our website, click on Intentional Communities, and you'll see the link to view the progress of our tiny house. And if you guys want, you can visit there. It'll be like an Airbnb, okay? And this will be like the nicest facility there, too, the nicest home. It's going to have like a full stainless steel kitchen with granite, full tile bathroom. It's going to have upstairs. It's going to be two bedrooms with a, with a view of the mountains, as you can see over there, right? And we're way up on the mountain too. This is all like in the Andes Mountains in the Amazon rainforest, which is the most diverse area of plants and animals in the world. And we've never even been to Ecuador until two years ago. But what attracted me is that there's these people that are so into this lifestyle, right? That they want they want their whole life designed around it. And all, all, ideally, we'd love to see everyone eventually do that everywhere. But for right now, this is what we have. Okay, and then if you want to experience it, we're going to be there. Amazon Fruit Festival it takes place in the Terra Frutis, Frutis community. It happens every year in the Amazon rainforest in that community. We've been there for the last two years. We're planning to go again it's in January. You can still get tickets if you feel like you want to go. Get on the plane, take a four-hour bus ride in the mountains, which is really like something you've never done before unless you've done that. We never did it so recently. And then when you get there, you're out in the middle of nowhere with people that are in this lifestyle. It's really cool. you know, And they have events all... Because it's so much less money than you'd ever think, too. Because we all know that the, about the inflation that's happened recently here. Price of real estate's ridiculous. Price of everything's going up, right? This is a lot. If you investigate this, the, the cost, it's a lot less than you would think just to go to this event. Yeah, we have a discount code, I think. Is it on the website? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully I'm telling you guys something new that you didn't know about too, because most people don't know about this stuff. <laughs> okay, here's another one. This is another community in Ecuador near Terra Fruit. It's called Fruit Haven Eco Village. It's a much larger community, and actually we have bought a farm there. And we are in the process of subdividing it and developing it. And when I say developing, it's not like your suburban development around here. It is all meeting these requirements. You can see it's like 70 acres, Fruit Haven 9 is what we bought. And all these other lands are part of the Fruit Haven community. This is 70, over 70 acres right here. So these are hundreds and hundreds of acres. And they're all going to be eventually cut into lots of about an acre and a half in size. That's all you need. You don't need any more than that to grow your own food, believe it or not. Like all your food. Especially in, in Ecuador because it's the same temperature all year round. 12 hours of sunlight all year round. It rains on a regular basis. You have natural sunlight. You don't need to irrigate anything. Like around here, you got to irrigate everything, right? Because there's a crazy dry season. It's like a desert here in the wintertime. That doesn't happen in Ecuador. So anyway, that's just a, a, that's a place that you can buy some of our lots if you want to, if you have any interest. It's, again, way less than you would think, way less. Anybody can afford this. Yeah, the weather is, yeah, it's been like, what, 55, 85? I mean, every single day, and it usually doesn't even get to 55. But you're at an elevation of like 2,700 feet above sea level. You're in the Andes Mountains. So you're not low like here. That's one of the reasons why the weather is variable here. And there's no hurricanes. No hurricanes in Ecuador. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, this is what we're doing locally too. Kind of piggybacking, or that's not a that's not a plant-based term, <laughs> but but uh, but this is what we're doing locally. Denise and I have been designing our own house since January of this year. This is what it looks like. Does anybody have any idea why it looks like this? Because it looks kind of weird, right? The roof line. If you look at the bottom of the left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's solar because this what you're looking at is the western view, which happens to be the front of the house. So the southern side is over here. So we wanted as much of the roof as possible facing south so that we don't we can produce all our electricity and actually more than we need. That's was the goal of this. And in addition to that, we are gonna plant, we're in the middle of designing not only the house, which we've not even broken ground on yet. It's outside of Fort Myers, just over in Lee County. And um, it's going to, we're going to design a permaculture food forest as the entire landscape. The only grass we're gonna have is gonna be over the septic system because that's required by law and we don't wanna plant any trees or anything there. But the goal also here is locally to show that you can have a house that's completely self-sustainable. We're gonna be on grid because you have to be actually in Florida, I don't know if you realize this, I didn't realize this. You have to be connected to the electric service. off grids illegal in Florida. <laughs> I don't know why, because like I said, we're going to produce more electricity than we need with this house design. It doesn't take much, but the problem is most houses are not designed to optimize solar, right? They're, they're designed to look good from the front. So the, the challenge we had with a bunch of an architect and designer was make it look good. We want that shed roof, but we want it to look good. So I don't know if you guys like it or not, but this is what it's going to look like. <laughs> it looks way better than I thought it would when we started. I thought it was going to look like a lean-to shed, you know, on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and then so the, uh, so that's what we're doing locally. So you'll be able to see that as that as that as, that, as we progress with that, you will hear about that. You'll see it on our social media. It's just been under wraps because we've been taking like a year to design it. Okay, and this is our newest nonprofit. We started another nonprofit because, as I mentioned, ultimately we believe this plant-based lifestyle is based in science. It's based in evidence. It's based in health, and it's all about the concepts of lifestyle medicine. So we have a a. a High, super high level nonprofit that we have really not even gotten into, even though we started two years ago. It's called lifestylemedicine.love. That's a web address. LOVE stands for Local Organic Vegan Eating. Okay, that, that's Dr. Rao uh, of Climate Healers actually coined that term. We use it with his permission. But so we, it's lifestylemedicine.love. And um, we're going to eventually certify foods and other activities that are health promoting through this, this nonprofit but they will be much higher level stuff. Because, well actually, more size, right? We'll, we'll tell you why here in a second. Higher level being more strict. Uh, well yeah, well the reason, there's a reason why. Um, but this is, you can also donate and help us get that nonprofit off the ground by going to Amazon, by helping us through Amazon Smile, you guys are familiar with that, whenever you go to the link. Well that link is on our website under under Give or under Lifestyle Medicine Love. Lifestyle Medicine Love is not its own site, it's just a tab on our plant-based app on our website. It's actually, Go through there and click through it. Every time you buy something, we will get money, which will be great because we have no money for that nonprofit. <laughs> but, we, but we think that eventually everyone will be focused on that. Okay, this is why we're doing that. We think that eventually, literally, everyone's going to be doing this. That's what we think. And that is our Instagram. It's actually plant based events.info. We post every time we go to a restaurant, we post it there. Every, all of our events are posted on there. If you're on Instagram, plant based events.info. And that's me, I'm a lifestyle nutritionist, so if you guys are interested in anything, uh, services, I do that from anywhere, video chat. And this is, this is, okay, this is, this is the big deal, this is why. I don't know if you guys know, I started up a new V book, I call it V, it's video, okay? I'm not doing a book where you have to buy it and read it. You go to YouTube, actually. This is a, a, a playlist on our YouTube channel, but it's called Live to 150. Because I truly believe that with the amount of knowledge we have out there right now, that I think the average person should live to about 150 years old, or at least be, have the ability to live to 150 if they do everything right. And what we've talked about here tonight is just kind of, it's a general overview of all these lifestyle medicine concepts. And I think when you bring them all together, what you get is better benefits than you ever thought possible. Because we've got, we already know that the average person, what life expectancy is like 75, 80 years old, something like that. And we also know that even from some of the concepts we've discussed here tonight, most people don't follow them, right? I mean, so think about this. If you really got serious about this and started to follow all these concepts, constantly educate yourself, learn about what's best, 
and have a group of people, like positive peer pressure, like I'm saying, we, we can't do this alone. We have to all work together. I think that everyone should be able to have that kind of ex that expectation of, I'm gonna live to 150, it's not gonna be, I'm, I'm you know, incapacitated and sick constantly once I get to 100. It's gonna be like a real life up to, up up to that point in time, you know? So I'm 51, we're about 51, I figure we got another almost 100 years left, 99 more years. <laughs> you know, it's kind of crazy, but I'm willing to learn. That's the thing, all you need is a, a, a spirit of willingness to learn. And I, and I do think that no one's ever done this kind of stuff long-term, right? We don't know. Just like we don't know the long-term effects of any pharmaceutical, but we're willing to take them, okay? Um, and our goal too, actually, by the way, is to not ever have to be on any maintenance medications. We don't think they're necessary, unless you have a, 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 a very specific genetic condition, which we do, or, or injury, okay? Which we, we totally, these are completely valid, but most of it, habits, lifestyle, it's all preventable. And, uh, and I, that's what I'm thinking, that's, that's, that's the, the book, it's 150. So, I only have four chapters out there. If you just subscribe to the YouTube, you'll get the chapters. Once I get out of the event season, and back in the summer, there'll be more chapters on it, lots more. This is Plant Pure Food, as Denise talked about earlier, that's what it looks like. Uh, this is the talk that we gave here tonight. <laughs> this is the event you were talking about, okay, in Fort Myers. This, yeah, this is, I highly recommend, if you guys like Indian food, I love Indian food, okay? This event is this Sunday. It's at Spice Club in Fort Myers. I know it's a little bit of a drive from here, but it's worth it. They usually have like, the Paul's been there, right? It's, they usually have like, what, I say, between 10 to 15 or more, right, on dishes, right, out there not spread. They're all completely plant-based. They all have no at all, and I've talked to them this time. I talked to Dillip, the manager. I said, please, put as little salt in there as possible. Because with Indian food, you don't need salt, really. They got all the spices in there, right? I mean, it's all about the, the plants and the spices with Indian food, and they know what they're doing. There'll be a little bit of salt in there. You can, the Lily salt shakers, you can always add it, but I'm just, that's his, my request to him. So that's what's gonna happen at this event. It's all you can eat, I think it's like $20 a head, right? Uh, all you can eat. So just don't eat dinner Saturday night if you want, take a little uh, intermittent fast, don't eat anything during the day, Sunday, and just show up and eat all you want. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat like crazy on that at that meal. And then this is at La Miraga here in Naples. We partner with them every month. We do a chef-driven event where they come up with new dishes every single month. It's usually a weekend of meals, Friday and Saturday dinner. You can make a reservation or just show up anytime between 4 to 9 p.m. It's happening this weekend. We're gonna be there on Saturday. I mean, it's probably early. We're gonna do a live video. In case you wanna, because we don't, since it's all made up every month, like created by the chef, unique dishes, we don't have pictures, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go make a live video on our social media so you can see what it looks like. Probably shortly before 4 p.m. on Saturday, we're gonna be there. And it's delicious, that's all I gotta tell you. If you guys have ever been there, you ever been to La Maraga? Uh, okay, it, and this is all plant-based. I mean, and it's, it's definitely worth doing. It's, it's definitely a, like a date night, uh, high-end type of a dinner experience, right? That, that's what this is. Just to show that, that this kind of food is desirable even in that type of uh, a situation. And then here, yeah, this is what we talked about, the plants at the table. This is our actual, our next plants at the table. It's gonna be on Saturday, December 11th. It's at Farmer Mike's. It's a ticketed event. We highly recommend you get tickets before it sells out. And uh, as I told you, what it, uh, what it is, is it's, it's, you're out there in the fields at Farmer Mike's where they're growing the plants, right? You're gonna be having dinner that's cooked out there. Chef Lily and actually Chef Don, you know, everybody knows Don from, um, uh, what's it? Food and Thought, right? You guys been there? He's not with them anymore, actually. He's a good one with Farmer Mike's, and he's gonna be helping us out to prepare this meal. Yeah, I've been meeting with them once a week. It's gonna be an amazing experience. Uh, it's about, I think it's $70 a ticket, and it's our annual like a fundraiser and a, and, a, and a update. I mean, we're gonna give them some updates too about some of the things we have planned with Farmer Mike's. And of course, Dr. Tuttle will be there. This is how you find out about our Plants to Table events. You go to plants2table, the number two, dot org, that URL will send you to a tab on our website where you can have, you can see we actually do three of them a year. One in, in the uh, DC area, one here in Southwest Florida, and one up in Ocala, Gainesville. So go to the one in the spring, Southwest Florida. When you go to plants, number two, table.org, you can buy tickets right there through Eventbrite. We don't have the menu up yet, but I'm meeting with uh, Chef Lily and Don next Wednesday, and we will post the, the 
the menu after that. And it's gonna be mostly plants that are grown on the farm that are in season that are picked right, right before our meal and prepared right there in the field. So it's a totally unique experience. And, and Dr. Shuttle will be there too. If you don't know him, you will be glad you have known about him when if you, you guys are at that so. <laughs> Hi, Hi. This is the last slide. So um, if you haven't signed up for our email list and you'd still like to, you can always send an email to aplantbasediet.org at gmail.com and put events in the subject line and then we'll add you to our newsletter. Yeah, and I want to mention that email list is just for plant-based events. You're not going to hear from anybody. We don't sell them any. We just want to. We want to build the list. Actually, I'll tell you, the list has seventy, actually seventy-six hundred, I think, uh, email addresses on there. The, it's getting bigger and bigger. And that's why we have all these events. We're very glad because when I started this, 2014, we didn't even have a festival. We didn't have anything going on. It was just the hope that one day we would have an event, and now we have like many events. So, you know. I just want to make sure that you're assured if you give us your email address, that's all you're going to hear about from us. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. And that's, that's our talk. I think that's, that's what we have for you tonight. <laughs> and I also want to mention, I know that uh, Paul, I'm talking to you that you all have a group here uh, at the community and we would love to partner with events going forward. And of course, we want to talk about uh, any questions you have now, any discussions. Uh, if you, yeah, question. Uh, yeah. If you take a bee complex, would you would you get enough B12? I mean, how much do you need of B12? Yeah, that's the only thing that, that most of the doctors will suggest that you take. And I would just recommend just a straight up B12 pill, right? They just have this, this the isolate of B12 and nothing else. You don't even need the other ones. As long as you're eating a, a variety of plants. How high a dose? Well, let's see. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on what the bottle you get. It usually tells you right on there. But yeah, a couple, a couple a week, uh, like a couple days a week is, is probably that's sufficient. Yes. Yeah, oh, that, that's awesome because, because um, yeah, I mean, well, you mean for B12 or for this yeah. cheese or okay? Yeah, if it's supplemented with it, yes, yes. But that, that's it. That's the critical. Like, like Denise mentioned earlier. Dr. Campbell has shown that taking supplements actually causes cancer. It truly does, which shocked me when I heard that. Like, I thought these things were supposed to benefit you. But the truth is there's almost no regulation in the supplement industry. You have no idea what you're taking. It's totally on faith, and it's probably going to cause cancer. Okay, at least that's the finding of Dr. Dr. Colin Campbell. And that, that's all he does is research this stuff. So, um, but B12 is the only thing you really need to take as long as you're eating a well-balanced plant. Uh, based on. Also, a lot of the meat substitutes are now actually incorporating B12 into the products themselves, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some of the stuff is fortified. Yes. Uh, but the meat substitutes in general, I have Paul and I were talking about this. They're more trans. I, we view them as transition products. Okay. Yeah. Like if you were to live to 150, you don't want to stay make that a staple of your diet. You want to use it to get off the animal products. We've all been trained to eat animal products. We all have, right? I've been brainwashed, I'll tell you. You know, <laughs> you know, my parents thought, they, you know, when I first went plant-based, they thought there was something wrong with me. But the more time that goes on, you realize this is the way everybody should be. So they're a great tool, you know, but, but don't depend on them. That's what I would say, long-term. Don't depend on them long-term. Yes? Does your website have a list of um, restaurants in this area, like Naples, Bonita? We do not. Yeah, we've had some some requests for that, but I will tell you the, the groups that we have, the local groups on Facebook. Are, are you on Facebook? Because if you are, you're not. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Well, just subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. We put out different things about restaurants, and maybe we'll develop a resource like that as as we get more folks involved. But for right now, it's just the Facebook groups that people kind of talk about that. There's a conversation about restaurants in those groups. Yeah. Are you familiar with Happy Cow? Happy Cow. Yes, Denise uses that. Yeah. I, I think for a nominal fee, you can download an app to your phone called Happy Cow. I think it's a dollar. Uh, but it, it's not as popular as it was anymore. I think before the pandemic, it like hit a peak. And now when we want to find a, a plant-based restaurant, we just do a Google search. And we'll find more stuff that way than we will with Happy Cow. But, um, but one advantage to Happy Cow is other people who have already tried their food will give you an honest opinion of the restaurant there. It, and uh, it usually has photos too, so you know what's best. Yeah, it's true. They have a website too, it's not just an app. What's that? They have a website too, it's not just 
Oh, website, okay. Yeah. And what I do, yeah, I don't use Happy Calc, so I get my friend Denise, but she does. I will just go to, on my phone, or you can do it on, on a desktop or a laptop, pull up your maps, whatever program you use, like I have use Google Maps, but you can use any of them, and in the search bar, I'll just hover over an area that I want to see, I'll type in vegan restaurant, and everything pops up, and I'll just start to investigate from there, and I'll just click on them and look at it, and that's how I find restaurants. So we're traveling all the time, that's how I find restaurants. I will give you a fair warning. When you do a search for vegan restaurants, if they serve the impossible there, that now classifies that restaurant as vegan. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, it is plant based. You have to be careful. Well, it is, it's all plants in Impossible Burger. It yeah. is, but it's not healthy plants. Yeah, that's right. It's not. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, got, it's processed. It's just, it's just like any processed food. I mean, the reality is the problem with processed food is there's many layers to that. We can get into a whole talk just on that, but it's just basically junk food. You know, anything, and your body doesn't really recognize it as food and it has all kinds of negative reactions. And, and that's also something I want to mention too, just a general concept. I'm not speaking, I'm not giving any medical advice, I, I don't, I just tell people what to eat. And I'll tell you that for the most part, when you've got a health issue, let's say you go to the doctor and they say, well, you gotta get on this medication for this, whatever. If it's a lifestyle issue, in my mind, it's usually your body telling you you're doing something wrong. So all you have to do is figure out what it is and then usually once you give your body the right conditions, it will heal itself. You know, and th this, I didn't understand this early on either. It's taken me a while, but I, to I truly believe this at this point in time. The body wants to be in balance, the body wants to be optimal, and wants to heal. But you have your own mind and you can choose what to do, and unfortunately we've all been trained wrong, okay? That's just a fact. We've all been trained wrong, unless you were raised whole food, plant-based, organic. <laughs> I don't know anybody that was. So we've got to retrain ourselves so that we put the right things in our mouth, and most of the time that resolves almost all the issues. So, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Well, we still got some yeah, do you need help? Yes, we, we want, yeah, want to help, yes. Yes, absolutely help, and like I said, everyone, even if you don't want to get into a formal volunteering with us, which we'd love to have uh, some, some regular volunteers, uh, we do, and we'd love to have more. Uh, just talk to your restaurants, right? The, the biggest thing that we need help with right now is go out to your restaurants, go out to your grocery stores, say, tell them, go to healthyveganfood.info and give me one of those, have that on your menu. I want something to buy that is truly, you know, health, health food. And uh, once they see the demand, once they hear it from a bunch of people, not just me, because I'm talking to them all the time, you know, but I'm only one person. But yeah, we can talk after. Yeah, anybody wants to talk to us after about anything, please do, too, you know. That's, I think that's probably all the questions, right? Yeah, I mean, so, otherwise, thank you for being here. And spread, spread the word, spread the message, don't be wrong. This is supercharge number 2086. Are we overdressed for the supercharger? No. How's your jacket? It looks fine from this view, but if you look down, I've got a full dress on with this jacket. <laughs> well, it's black, you can't tell. Maybe you don't pass for